These bolts that hold the mounting for the electric motor have cat nuts on them that fall down into the styrofoam that the blower wheel sits in. So be sure to catch those cat nuts for all three screws. And don't lose these spacers in here because the front's coming right off. It's likely not the front one that's causing the trouble. It's the one that's exposed to the weather back here. It really should have had a weather cap on it, but anyway, I just took a hammer and screwed over and tapped this bell and got it dislodged on the evaporator side and the clean side. Regrease it. Now the back one's going to be stuck in there pretty good. That's nice. This looks like the back's opposite to the wiring plug in, so it's stuck on there. I'm have to work on that. Alignment mark. Shims. Looks like there's quite a few. Two, three, four. I'm taking some synthetic grease and packing it around that gap between the bushing and the washer. It'll it'll feed into it as it wears. Plus there's a little slit in the bushing. I guess originally oiled it. I'm packing it full of grease and right in the middle of it. But uh, I'm just wicking the grease up under, between that washer and the bushing on both sides. I'm gonna switch the front bell with the back one. And let this one that hasn't been in the weather or be in the weather, it'll last longer. It'll be alright. Okay, I switched these bells the outside with the inside and the inside with the outside. And then I'm going to, where I mark the top on them, I'm going to mount them on the bottom. So the bushings will wear on the part that was on top instead of the. I cleaned the bushings up with a. Almost equivalent to like a gun cleaning brush. Now I run a drill bit by hand through and make sure they're square. Pack the rings and beside the rings, between the rings and the bushings with grease. Just synthetic grease. So I'm going to put it back together now. I don't know, did I see that? Motor's spinning now. That's the uh, way it's supposed to work. That's doing pretty good now. Yep. That'll work. While the motor's out, you can take the styrofoam out and clean it if you want to. I went ahead and put some non fibered roofing cement on some of the rusty places to keep it from rusting out any further. This corner was kind of rough over there, so just a thin coating of roofing cement on the rusty places will slow that down. I mean, like to a stop. I'm going to drill a drain hole right there in the middle of this lowest point on the back of this to help the water get out, and that's what facilitates that rust. I re sterilized everything and cleaned it out. This is where the air that recirculates inside your house is coming through. So I took took all this and bleached it down and took all the parts out and put them in a tub and washed them in bleach water and detergent. It really makes a really is an outfit a mess. I tore up these end plates on this condenser, slowed that down. The rest of where you got the bolt hole that stabilizes this to the back of this cover. This one's still intact.
Now it's time to start putting this back together. I'll drop the styrofoam down in there. And stick the motor back in it. I dropped the styrofoam down in here. Now I need to set the blower wheel in there. Alright, the blower wheel's laying down in there. Probably could have set that blower wheel down in with the uh, styrofoam, but it's, it's a little aggravating unless you have another pair of hands to get the clearance. I'm going to melt this motor plate back on. Motor side and top. Match it up with the marks I put on the motor housing. There's a top mark there. There's a top set there. Need to tighten the screws up. And put this plate on. The motor mounting plate's on with the top line with the marks on the motor. I tightened these down hand tight and then gave them an eighth inch turn. Just with the nut driver, snugged them down, gave them an eighth, eighth to three sixteenths inch turn. Then I put a wrench on them and tried to loosen them. If they want to come back, give them another sixteenth of an inch until they, you know, it takes at least a pound to loosen them up because there will be some vibration involved in this. They've got lock washer, little spiked washers underneath them to hold them, but you want them snug down pretty good. Now don't forget your composite ring is on the condenser side. On the back of the motor, it blows the hot air off of it. I don't know what that is. That's some kind of composite washer. I don't know if it's some kind of a water shield or what it is to help out with water control or who knows. Well, before you mount the motor, this is an excellent opportunity to clean any crap off the condenser back here or straighten any fin damage up. Use a brush to rake the crap out of there and shop back it off. Now it's time to stick the motor through this styrofoam. And snap this blower wheel back onto the shaft. Route your wires back around. And then the wire holder is going to go back on after the motor is mounted back up. And there's cat nuts that goes in through here for the screws that holds the motor mount. These cat nuts go back in there before the blower wheel goes on so you can get a hold of them real good. The motor's mounted back on there. And then the cap nuts are back in their holes. Now I need to put the, this wire hold down back on. And snap this blower wheel back into place. Make sure all your wires are flat and spread out and not overlapping one another. Tighten the quarter inch screw down. I clamped some vice grips on this back shaft and wiggled it while pushing on this wheel and wiggling it. Now it's time to take the needle nose and put that clamp back on there. Lower wheel clamp is installed. It's time to stick the condenser fan shroud back on before we mount our fan blade. And not tear up the condenser. Hearing fan noise is never a good thing. Now it's time for the condenser fan. Getting tight in there. This clamp was busted. So I found a clamp that's going to fit in place of the factory one. It's about 5 eighths, 3 quarter inch diameter. It's lightweight, sent to out of balance. I'm going to use these snub nose pliers to fish the clamp back back in through that once the fan's installed. 
and use my fingers to slide the clamp farther down. Looks like the clamp's mounted and pushed back. Now to ease that condenser back down in that tray. I'll do it from the other side while probably bent this bigger line just a little bit to get the condenser that far out. So I'll be holding on to this line and the other side of the condenser to walk it back and crimp this line just a little bit. And then watch these capillary lines. The condenser is sitting back down this tray, but these screw holes are pretty rusty. I'm going to have to scab a piece of metal onto these end headers to keep them like sinking down as the fins lay in the water. They'll rot and then it'll be laying on the tubes. But I went ahead and put the fan shroud that's squared up. The condenser sits around inside the fan shroud square and the fan still turns all right so I'm gonna work on scabbing a piece of metal onto that skinny strip of galvanized and screw it to this side in place of the originals I cut out a piece of metal so I can fix this side of the up. I put a rivet in. I'm going to drill another one just below it. I drilled a hole for the quarter inch screw to go through the cabinet into it. If you're drilling next to those coils, make sure you use a spacer on your drill bit so it can't, it's only like an eighth inch of it sticking up and it can't make it to the, and hit the coil. Or you'll bust it. So it's just a, some spacers on the drill bit. Use the shallowest ones I got. Looks good. That'll hold it. I went ahead and put these screws in this plastic fan shroud. I got a washer on them. And then the cap nut on that shroud down there. And this cap nut goes on the other side. And this screw, this sits in line with the condenser. And these quarter inch screws in this brace. I got this brace installed. There was a screw missing out of this side. I guess the factory decided not to put one in it. I'm going to put some clear silicone on those end bell caps on the motor. It looks like the ring can get right down to it. So I'm going to insulate it from the moisture on these end bell seams. That's a done deal. Transparent coating of silicone all around the bells. Really sh needs, should have had a shield on this shaft.
to the outside. That it'll hold up. That synthetic grease will keep the mess out of it for years. The condenser side's done. Condenser fans. Looks like everything's in order. Just need to put this plastic divider back in on the evaporator side. I went ahead and drilled a drain hole at the lowest point in this back cabinet. Which is right there. It's about a 3 16 of an inch hole. Right just past the condenser fan. That'll help keep some of the crap off the condenser. And keep crap from piling up on the condenser. Drop this. It has a hook and then a pin that pops into a hole to hold it. It just lays in that spot down there in the styrofoam and that'll be split over. Far enough going behind that one. Then that one, push in on the center and get this clip to go in. Clip went in, pin's locking it. There's a metal plate that goes over this. This deal here. It had a little catch in there somewhere. Make sure your evaporator settle down that these clamps are flush with this front. Or your evaporator is not settled down. And flow forward there. Let's straighten this up. And screws anywhere near the coils, use the shortest possible one that there is. That one's 3 sixteenths of an inch long, maybe. So it don't get into one of the coils. Especially on the condenser. This front one took short screws, but that kind of helps from putting a hole in a styrofoam pan. It takes a little short ones in the, these front brackets. I don't see anywhere else where it matters. Okay, I've put these two, three screws in. One that holds this plastic retainer and the cover. One in this header for the evaporator. Put these bracket screws back in, make sure they're all tight. Just check everything over. Slip this vent door back in here. Looking good. About time for the cover. Don't get asphalt all over me. Hopefully the cover will cover all that up. Frosty.
Bristol. Just painting the heat well. We're barely move forward. Put the cover back on it. Fans are coasting well now. It's good to know. Use a scratch all or similar to locate your top holes. Put screws in, get them started in it. Just put all the screws in loose. The short screws apply, especially in the back corners. And the back side short screws apply. There's a line running down through there. This the right side. Doesn't matter. This left side has a line running down the side, so preferred short screws in it. Now all the screws are put back in it. Corner screws. Top two screws, side screws. Just got to put the front cover, and what holds the front cover is two screws inside of it. Right there is where the screws that hold the front covers on is at. Enough. 